stands before you offers living water and proceeds to tell her everything about herself. Sees right through the facade, sees right through the protests and into her soul and loves her anyway. And she is so transformed by that that she runs and she tells her friends, come and see the one who told me everything about she risked. She was courageous. She was vulnerable and transparent. And Jesus rewarded that faithfulness with grace and a transformed life. This continued to be the experience of those who stayed close to Jesus, not as much for those who strayed. Two chapters later in 6, um, there's a little bit of controversy, and several of the followers abandon and leave. And Jesus turns to his 12, we presume, and says, will you leave also? And there's an awkward silence before one of them speaks up and says, Lord, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. You are the incarnation of God in grace. Where else can we find that? In his later letters, 1 John, the Gospel writer, says it is not that we loved God. It is that God loved us first. And that's what grace is. It's always coming prior to our timid responses, our failed responses, our straying, our holding back, our failures. It is not that we love, but that God loved us first. It is such a hard lesson to learn, even amongst the most faithful of persons, those most esteemed in the faith, those that we look up to in the faith. It is commonly known about John Wesley, you've heard of him, right? Uh, founder of the Methodist movement, uh, was doing everything just right. He had the right education at Oxford. He hung with the right group of friends. He went to worship. He went to Sunday school. Well, actually, he created the Sunday school. But he was doing everything right. Read the scriptures, read, uh, prayed regularly, had communion, and yet was so such a control freak uh, that he insisted on doing things his way until his way no longer. And he failed utterly in a mission effort, in an extensive mission effort in what we now know as the state of Georgia. And he came back a broken man, uh, wondering where on, earth, where on earth do I turn? Uh, only to find, well, you don't look on earth, you look in heaven. And he found that a prayer meeting with a bunch of Arabian Christians. And it was in that experience that we, he famously and strangely found his heart as he laid his broken life at the feet of Christ, whose grace was sufficient. That's when Wesley's work took off. That's when he found the fire of his faith that was beyond his own finite abilities. And a movement was born, first in England and then across the pond here in the colonial uh, states. Um, Wesley would go on to find that and preach that we are a people who must get beyond our heads and find the faith within our hearts and beyond the, the momentary uh, encounters with um, God through formal religion and worship, uh, but that it is an all the time, all in experience. Um, I didn't go to Oxford, but I, I went to a pretty prestigious university where everything turned on the grade. Everything turned on your aspirations. And we all find our crises at different points in our life, and they're only significant when they're yours, right? They are significant because they are real. And when you're 20 years old and you're at a high-powered university where you're supposed to be making B's and A's and you're not, then you fail, literally. You're in a place where you wonder, who am I? Who do I even tell this to? Not mom and dad. They pay the bills. Uh, your sense of self-worth and your sense of uh, contribution uh, 
really hits the ground. And it's in, it was in that crisis at about age 20 that I found myself in a church, not unlike today, and finding myself saying, you know, I, I can't do this. I, I can't do this on my own. Uh, I'm going to need you, Lord, the way that I've never invited you in before. I'm going to need you in a way that I've never been honest about before. I'm going to need you in a way that might very well be transformative, and I'm going to have to give up control over everything I thought was mine to decide. Uh, and that was not easy. Um, but when I did, I understood better when Wesley said his heart was strangely warm. And when I was willing to be honest about my own fear, my own vulnerability, and give that up to God, I became convicted about how that must be true for everybody if we're courageous enough to talk about it. Um, and admit it to one another, admit it to ourselves, and, and admit it to God. Because it's at that point of open honesty that God does God's best work in us. That God and God's grace flow. He does in ways that up to that point we just don't allow. It's, it's too scary. Um, and I wound up not being a lawyer or a business person or a corporate exec. I wound up being a pastor. And that's not everybody's calling. It just happened to be mine that came from the lowest place. And I find the people that are most convicted to buy their faith are the ones that have known the greatest growth in us and know God to be more than sufficient with God's grace to meet every need, even those that the individual didn't recognize that they had. Um, for me, uh, first as a lay Christian and then as an ordained pastor, I have always loved communion because it on a regular basis gives me an opportunity, whether I'm physically on my knees or on the knees of my heart, the built-in structure to get honest again about my current fears and my current vulnerabilities and what I might not have been to most people. Uh, but God calls me to an honesty with God, the transparency there that then God can heal, then God can empower, then God can flood me with the grace that is always there waiting for me to openly receive it. Um, so it's my hope that as we come to the railing here in a few minutes, that we might hear this communion experience, this a word of invitation uh, to be exactly what Jesus said to his disciples, and to be exactly um, what the the Arabian Christian said to John Wesley. In inviting him to the prayer meeting. Come and see. Come and see for yourself. And live in that space uh, as Jesus invited the two disciples of John's to do. Come and see. And they went 